Her Majesty's Australian ship Diamantina was the Navy's grand old lady. In 35 years of outstanding service, she's fought the Japanese, explored the oceans, and given young sailors their first taste of life at sea. She's endeared herself to everyone who sailed on her, and now she's about to make her final voyage. The last of Australia's steam-driven river-class frigates is going home to Queensland, where she was born. Soon, Diamantina will enter Moreton Bay, and the pilot will take over. Then, it's home for good. But first, there's a visitor to be welcomed aboard. For him too, it's the most important day since she was commissioned. Maury Rose was her first commanding officer. Five years' service in the North Atlantic with the British Navy had made him a hardened seaman, familiar with the challenges and dangers of war at sea. But the Diamantina left a mark on him too. Hey, Peter, hey. We're going to come back. 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 We're going to what a yeah, surprise to see you, too. I didn't know the last night it was you who was no. coming on board. What a marvellous reunion. Commander Rose, what's it like to be back on the Diamond Tina again? Oh, lovely. Especially with this bloke, too. We served together in the North Atlantic. I suppose it brings back old memories, eh? Oh, yes. <laughs> we must so. Yeah. Chris, oh. do you know uh, Commander Morris Rose? No. no. Welcome aboard, sir. Back to your old ship, I believe. Yes, yes. Well, well that's a bit different, of course. Here on the bridge is the first change he'll notice. When she steamed off to war, there was only a canvas canopy, making it the most dangerous place on board. I uh, well remember the day when the ship was commissioned in Queensland, in Harvey Bay. I see now that the ship is flying the Red Ensign, and as the ship was sailed down the Mary River from the builders, she was flying the Red Ensign. And it wasn't until the next morning at 8 o'clock that I commissioned the ship into the Royal Australian Navy and we then hoisted the White Ensign. Uh, we had altogether, in addition to myself, 160. So we had quite a big ship's company. And what kind of artillery would you have had on in those days? We had a main armament, two four-inch guns, one just where we are now standing, and one up forward. And with those guns, we carried out our several bombardments of the Japanese. The gunners had not fired many shots in anger when the Japanese began to surrender en masse. At places like Ocean Island, she became an agent of peace, and Murray Rose remembers every detail. The actual surrender ceremonies themselves probably didn't take more than about 15 minutes but uh, the, the whole episode was of great interest to us. We set up a table just down here, put a green tablecloth over the lot. There was a bit of wind, so we held it down with uh, weights and set up chairs on each side of it. Brigadier J.R. Stevenson was the officer appointed to take the surrender on behalf of uh, General MacArthur. I sat on his right hand side as the official representative of the Australian Navy and opposite us sat the Japanese. The terms of surrender were read out by Brigadier Stevenson in English, interpreted by an Air Force officer who understood Japanese. The senior Japanese officer then signed the instrument. It was handed over the table to Brigadier Stevenson and he then countersigned it. Can you describe what the feeling was like at that surrender? The feeling of the ship's company, you mean? Oh, I suppose I can only describe it in the way that it really affected myself. I was uh, very glad that everything was over. I'd had over uh, well, just, just on six years continuous active service and I was very glad to find it was all finished and that we had won. 
I had no doubt whatsoever that we were going to win. Uh, I was a bit surprised earlier in the year to find that the end of the war was coming a bit closer than I had really anticipated. But uh, generally I'd say we were all relieved that it was over. Next week, A Big Country brings us a fascinating story of a shepherdess in a remote district of Tasmania. Be watching at 10 past 8 next Wednesday for Amy. Well, go on, Adam. Oh, we'll just scratch the